So humans have looked up at this night sky and been fascinated by the universe for thousands of years. As the telescopes and, our, and technology have improved, our ability to understand our place in the universe and how the universe was formed has evolved and changed dramatically. We now know that our planet circles the sun. The sun is just one of billions of galaxies, uh, of stars in our galaxy. And our galaxy is just one of billions of galaxies in the universe. But what we've learned just recently is that all of the energy in these planets and stars and galaxies, all of the energy in the stuff that we can see, only makes up 5% of the energy in the universe. So this is a big mystery. It's a bit like the situation with the blind men trying to understand an elephant. Each one of them can feel only a small piece of the elephant, and that's sort of like the different ways we can measure the universe. But even when we put all the pieces together, I'm not getting the slide. A, all right. Even, why isn't there no slide? There we go. Okay. But even when we put all the pieces together, all we learn is that we're just really we're still missing something big. We can tell that that it's not really fitting together in a way that we have a, a real understanding of it. For the blind men, there were really two issues. One is that they are blind, and the second one is that this whole, uh, all these pieces of the elephant fit together in something that was so complicated and larger than anything in their experience and anything that they could imagine. We've known since the 1920s that the universe is expanding. We thought, we've been thinking there's the Big Bang, Space is expanding, it's slowing down due to gravity, and eventually it would stop, or maybe it would stop and collapse back in on itself. But in 1998, we learned that, in fact, the universe expanded, and the expansion slowed down for about 7 billion years, but then it started accelerating. So the expansion of the universe was going slower, 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 and then whoosh, it started to speed up. And for the next 7 billion years or so, the expansion of the universe has been speeding up. We don't understand what's causing this, but we've given it a name. We call it dark energy because we can't see it. It's dark, and energy because it's pushing the universe apart. This accelerated expansion was um, discovered by looking at a special type of star called supernovas. This picture shows 16 of the supernovas, these stars, exploding, uh, in the act of exploding. The fuzzy blobs on the picture are the host galaxy where the star was living, and the little bright spots are the stars in the act of exploding. These galaxies and, and supernovas are billions of light years away. It takes billions of, so it takes billions of years for the light to get to us. So when we measure this light, it's telling us about the universe billions of years ago. As the light comes to us, it's also stretched by the expansion rate of uh, the expansion of the universe. And these supernovas are a special kind of explosion. So they call them a, we call them a standard candle. When they're close to us, they're very bright, and the further away they are, the dimmer they are, just like a, a candle would be. And they explode the same way, so it's a standard candle. And we can use them to measure the distance. So we put this information together, the brightness of the supernovas, and how much the light is stretched as the light travels to us, and use that to measure the expansion rate of the universe as a function of time. But it's even stranger than that. Just a couple decades before we discovered this dark energy stuff, we discovered that our, all of the mass in uh, the galaxies that, that we can see uh, isn't enough. We need another many, many, many times more mass than, um, than what we can see. And so we invented another name, dark matter. And this is just a conception of, of the dark matter halo that surrounds the Milky Way galaxy. It's many, many, many times more mass than is in the Milky Way stars that we can see. Now we can't actually see the dark matter, that's why we call it dark but we can see its effects. Matter bends light. And in this picture, you can see 
uh, all those bright galaxies that are in the foreground, but those streaks, those arcs, uh, there, those arcs, indicated by the arrows, so you can see where they are, those arcs are actually the image of a galaxy that's behind this huge clump of dark matter that surrounds this halo, this, this uh, cluster of galaxies. So these clumps of dark matter are really like peepholes into space. You look through those peepholes and you can see deeper into space and you see these sort of weird distorted images as you do when you look through a peephole. So when we put all this information together, it turns out that all the energy in the universe is made up of 5% of the stuff that we're familiar with on planets, stars, Earth, that sort of stuff, 25% of this dark matter stuff, and about 70% dark energy. So it's a mystery, and we want to study it. The group that I, that I work with just finished building this digital camera. It's a five-ton, 570-megapixel digital camera. I'm not sure you can see the guy just a little to the left of, of center there. He's attaching some of the cables. Um, the special part about this camera is it's really big. The, field, the focal plane is about half a meter in diameter, and the field of view is about 10 times the size of the moon, the full moon. And it's sensitive, in particular, to that light that comes from the time when the universe, the expansion of the universe was slowing down and then started speeding up, right around that time, seven billion years ago, when, when this change occurred. So I was, I'm a physicist by training, but I was the project manager for getting this thing built. We had to build an international team, convince governments to fund us, by the way, all the data that we take will eventually show up on Google Sky and be publicly available. So all the images that come from this thing are, uh, are going to be out there for the public or universities to use. And what sustained my enthusiasm and the whole group's enthusiasm through this whole process, nine years of talking to funding agencies and trying to convince them to keep us funded, um, was that, that we're missing something really fundamental about what's going on in the universe and how the universe was formed. And this new, huge digital camera is going to help us collect the images and the data that let us take the next step in understanding the nature of dark energy and our universe. <laughs>